Let's solve this question. So here we have a very interesting pie chart. We're going to read this along with the text to understand what's happening. This is about a certain retail store that has 60 employees and the employees have actually been divided into three types. These are full-time salespeople, FT sales, then part-time salespeople, PT sales here, and then finally managers. And this pie chart actually shows you the split of these 60 employees about which type they are each of. So if I see FT sales here is 30% of all the employees, then this is just 30% of 60 if you do the calculation it's 18 people similarly on managers 10 percent of 60 that's six people and obviously the remaining if you calculate or you just see 60 percent that's 36 these are your pt sales then what happens is they give you more information about these sales people and the managers and information is about two things one is about the number of hours per week that they work and second of course is already what you've read about number of people so i'm going to just create a table here where i will talk about all three of these in terms of number and number of hours of work per week. Let's fill this. Here's your table. First, I'll just fill in the number of employees as we just found out. This was your 18, 36, and 6. Now, for the number of hours, we'll read the question further. Each full-time salesperson, FT sales, and each manager works the same number of hours per week. So, I don't know what this number is, but it's the same. So, FT sales and managers say both of them work for X hours a week. This is for each of these types. Then, for each part-time salesperson, we have that this person works exactly half that many hours per week half of what half the number that you had for your full time and manager which means this is going to be x by two hours per week remember this is per employee the hours per week that i'm filling this is now all of the information that we've read till now now let's read further store wants ratio of total number of hours worked per week by full-time salespeople to something else ratio always has to be one quantity to another second is total number of hours again by the part-time salespeople, and they want this ratio to be two to three and then there is more information first i'll try to understand this much how will i get the total number of hours worked per week by all of the employees i will simply multiply the number of employees of each type by the number of hours they're working per week right so if i do this for ft sales this is obviously going to be 18 x hours pt sales if you again do the multiplication it's 18 x only because 2 and 36 cancel out this here is 6 x now they're saying that they want something specific for the full-time sales people and the part time sales people they want the ratio of these total hours to be two is to three as of now if i look at the ratio it's one is to one because both of these numbers are equal so they want to make some changes i don't know whether the changes are going to be number of hours or you know changes are going to be number of employees but some changes will have to be made so that this ratio turns into a two is to three that's what we found now now they tell us further about something that they will not change for this they want to achieve this ratio without changing number of managers or the number of hours that a manager works per week, which means that this 6 will not be changed. This X will not be changed. So this 6X is something which stays the same. Essentially, I am going to change nothing at all about the manager. Now, since I've understood everything that was given here, I know something is going to change among these four values. We'll just go to the question and see further what they're telling us. And then we'll know how we're going to do this. Hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition, and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. So, let's just see the question and here you go. What I see here is a single statement that has two blanks in it. Let's just read the statement. To achieve the desired ratio, the 2 to 3, the store could and look at this, decrease or increase the number of full-time salespeople. So that's one thing we're changing, number FT. And we are doing something else and the number of part-time salespeople. Again, you see the choices are just about changing the numbers. Okay, so this actually makes it very clear that the way I'm going to do this is only by changing these two numbers here. Nothing else I'm changing. I'm not changing the X or the X by 2 here either. 
So now that I know it's this 18 and 36 which is changing, let's try to visualize how this is going to happen. Just suppose that this number 18 turns into 18 plus A and this turns into 36 plus B. Now no, I'm not assuming that these are definitely increasing. A and B could be negative also, in which case it will be a, a decrease. If I have these new numbers, then the new total number of hours I can get by multiplying the new number of employees by the number of hours per week. Because nothing is changing about the X's, right? This is the ratio which is equal to 2 by 3. If you mathematically write the ratio, you will see that the x variable gets cancelled only anyway from numerator and denominator. This 2 by 3 therefore comes out as a relationship between A and B only. So further, if I simplify this, let's see what we're going to get. We will have 18 plus A here and I'm just going to take the 1 by 2 here to the right side, multiply the 1 by 2 on the right side this way, in which case I have that 18 plus A upon 36 plus B is one third. I'm getting closer to finding more about this A and B. Then you cross multiply and you can get even more that 36 plus B is equal to 54 plus 3A. This gives you a single equation when you rearrange in terms of A and B. So 3A minus B will be negative. Let me write B minus 3A. This is simply going to be 54 minus 36, which is 18. So I now know that my B and A have to satisfy this equation. So I have multiple choices now. I'll just take this to the question to see how I can find B and A that work for me. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAC course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we applied our process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course, you will learn how to build these process skills through purpose-built exercises. With each process skill learning activity and practice quiz pair, you will find your confidence increasing. Thus, throughout the Quant course, through over 2,200 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably navigate even the hardest of questions. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Here we are. So first understand what these choices are in relation to the B and A. B and A I took as simply the changes in the number of employees. I didn't specifically say increase, decrease, which means if I'm talking about a decrease by two, I am talking about A or B, whichever one it is, to be negative two. Similarly, decrease by four, decrease by six would be negative numbers and increase would be two, four, six. If you notice, you have the exact same choices here for the second blank also. So you just have to find one pair of values B and A from these possibilities so that B minus 3A is equal to 18. That's it. So here what you can do is you can try plugging in taking one by one these values and seeing which one is working. Before we start just understand the first blank is for change in the FT salespeople which is your A. That means my first blank is for A. Second for PT that's for B. Now there are two ways in which I can go about this. One A is by using some inferences about A and B and second A is simple plugging in values and seeing what works. Now before going into plugging in I'm going to show you how inferences can make your job easier every time. You'll see the difference when I show you both. So look at this equation again. I can say that my B is equal to 3A plus 18, which means I can see 3 as coming out common from this expression on the right hand side, which means that my B is a multiple of 3. If B is a multiple of 3, automatically you come to the stage that B is either negative 6 or 6, because out of all of these choices that you have, nothing else is a multiple of 3, which means you can already eliminate all of these possibilities for the second blank. After this, you're only left with 6 or negative 6. Now you can plug in B equal to 6 and negative 6 and see for which one you get the corresponding value of A. So for example, I take B equal to negative 6, then this is going to be here, negative 6 minus 3A is equal to 18, which means your 3A will be equal to negative 6 minus 18, negative 24, but that means your A is equal to negative 8. Is that among the choices? It's not. That means you don't even need to check. You can already be sure that your B is equal to 6 only. Just so that you get the value of A, you will still have to do the plugging in. You do B as 6, you solve this simple equation, your 3A is going to be negative 2. 12, and so your A is negative 4. This is bound to be in the choices and when I see it, it really is here. So I found my pair very easily because I used my inference process skill. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'll remove this inference and we'll see how we could have done this by directly plugging in and then you compare the two methods. So when I start substituting, say my A is negative 2. Now see, when you put negative 2 here, this is going to be B plus 6. B plus 6, 18 means B will be 12. 
Do you have 12 in the options? No. It's such a quick check to just reject because the numbers are really small. Similarly, next one you take A to be negative 4. Negative 4 goes in here. This thing becomes a plus 12. B plus 12 is 18 means B is equal to 6. Do I have 6? I do have 6 and I am already done. I have the pair I was looking for. That's it. Let's now nicely summarize this question. We started here by understanding everything that was given to us. There was information about the number of employees in each of three types, then about the number of hours they work. And then the interesting part started that they didn't want it to stay as it was given. They wanted to change something. They wanted the ratio between two specific quantities to change from one to one to two to three. And then to really translate that requirement into math was a very interesting thing. We visualized this information in the same table that suppose the change I'm doing for FT sales, PT sales, that's A and B, where AB could be negative to signify decreases, positive to signify increases. See how versatile a variable is. Then when I set this up, I got a clean relationship between B and A, which I then used to find the values of A and B by two methods. First, by inferring something about B, that it's a multiple of three, which helped us shortlist the possible values, narrow them down from six to just two. And then finally, we plugged in to get corresponding A. We also saw how we could directly plug in, putting in these values one by one for A, but then here we were lucky to get the answer on the second A value only. It could very well have happened that the correct value came later and that would have taken a lot more time. So while both of these are correct, we can clearly see how this one is a lot more efficient. And this is something which will generally happen before you jump into values and start checking everything. See if there's a pattern that you identify. See if there's anything that you can infer. It's always going to help you narrow things down and save precious time.